Content warning. This episode of Pod Feels contains suicidal ideation and attempted suicide. Your name is John Eckbert, and you're fairly sure you used to be human. There was a dream in a dark place that spoke so loud a universe followed in its wake. You never really thought to think of it back when you and your friends were just playing games. Too many dogs, too many clowns, and too many combinations thereof to allow for an extended, self-reflective think on the matter of existence. Right up until the moment you won, fun and fear were all any of you could handle. Since then, over six years have passed on the home you made together. You'd like to say that Earthsea is a peaceful and happy place, but the fact is that you just don't know. You'd have to leave your house for that. Your name is John Egbert. You have a variety of interests, including a passion for really terrible movies, being not very good at programming computers, and other things too, presumably. You are feeling particularly maudlin today, and there is something on your mind that you can't quite put into words. Seems as good a time as any to talk to your friends. Don't talk to me about the hey, mayor. The mayor was Rose? my friend. Yes? Are you busy? That depends on your definition, Egbert. If by busy, you mean struggling to collaborate with a certain time-bound mean child and his angry bullfrog of a boyfriend in corralling a mob of bloodthirsty care patients, then no, obviously I am not in the least bit busy. Oh. Okay. What is it? What's what? John, you called me. What's wrong? It, it's nothing. I mean... You're obviously trying not to bother me, which I respect and appreciate, but vaguely gesturing at a nothing that is clearly a something only hey, really Rose, manages to- stop playing phone therapist oh, and give up. us a hand? We're not sponsored by BetterHelp. We have it all under control. The is huh? the problem worse. Please Hello, on. John. Uh, Naya? No, this is Carcat. That was sarcasm. Wow. I'm getting good at that. Thank you. I am trying. What happened to Rose? She appears to be channeling the essence of sundry dark magics in an attempt to frighten the Carabasians back into their can hives. What's going on? Honestly, John, I am unclear as to the precise details of the situation, but I am already convinced that it is Carcat's fault. Oh, uh. Do you need help? Aren't you on the other side of the planet? I can do the windy thing. The windy thing? Yeah, you know. Turn in the wind, mysteriously appear places. It's like... the thing that I do? Yes, John, I know all of the information you just said to me. That was a skeptical statement, not a question. I haven't seen you do the windy thing in several sweeps. Why couldn't you just appear here instantly with your other ability? I don't... I don't really... You don't like to use it. You barely leave the house because the windy thing is unreliable and the other thing makes you sad. We have had this conversation several times. Hence my previous skepticism as to your ability to promptly cover great geographical distances in time to assist with the current emergency. Thanks for the call out, Kanaya. I am fairly certain you called me. You called Rose! John, we are literally married. In your culture, that is like becoming the same person. <laughs> what? Like, fusion? Where you combine into one large lady and then scramble your names? Like, Lolliam? Rokaniah? Mary Rose? I think you are making a reference to something that I do not understand. But yes, just like those things you said, and their various cultural implications, we become one disproportionately oversized being with a charming and easily recognizable portmanteau for a name. Only in this case not like that at all, and instead entirely metaphorical. That was more sarcasm. I know. I thought that sounded like something John would say. What? I mean, uh, something I would say? Sorry, it's been a weird morning. Just tell me if everyone is okay. 
Rose safe? Rose is a god. She'll be fine. I... Cool. Got it. Tell Rose to call me back, I guess. I will do that just as soon as we get these fires put out. John? Are you still there? Rude. You feel something tug at your heart from far away as the screen of your phone goes dim. Rose used to say she'd be there for you no matter what, and you know she meant it. That's the kind of thing that friends say to each other when they care. But life happens, doesn't it? Sometimes we are too busy to keep our promises, and it is nobody's fault. Which, unfortunately, doesn't lessen the disappointment one feels when the support you need is nowhere to be found. Even though you aren't sure what you want to talk about, you know you need to talk to someone. It's begun to eat at you like a name that's stuck on the tip of your tongue. Unfortunately, it seems like all your conversational standbys are tied up at the moment. Sounds familiar. That's not fair. No one is avoiding you. It's busy work keeping a civilization in order. Okay, who else is free? You unlock your phone and scroll through your contacts. Jake? Jane? Too busy being moguls. The sprites? Mysteriously unflappable and generally ignorant of nuance. Roxy? You love talking to her, but she is probably on a well-deserved wine date with Calliope who you also love, surprising no one. Dirk? You've never really connected on account of Dave, and you get the sense that he doesn't like you that much anyway. Every time you're in the same room, there's something in the way he looks at you that makes you feel uncomfortable. You think that if you tried talking to him now, it would only worsen your mood. Jade? Hmm... No. Finally, you stop at Terezi. You haven't talked to her in a long time, probably because she is in the far reaches of Paradox space looking for Briska. You always enjoy your verbal sparring matches in a masochistic sort of way, but you don't want to be a bother. Gosh, everyone just has so many irons in the fire. Where did they even find all those irons? And why did none of them involve you? Not a moment after you lock your phone again does the screen light up. What the hell is this music? Oh, right. John's interests. Your interests, you mean. Terezi's smudged selfie smiles back at you. What do you need, John? Hi, Terezi. Greetings, salutations, something, something. Grub pun, what do you need, John? How is Paradox Space? Broken. Cold. It's like Alternia, but worse. What do you need? Any leads on Briska? Yes, John, I interrogated many ghosts in a dramatic show of legislative acumen. I've gathered dozens of tantalizing clues and put them up on a wall to be covered with red string the way idiots do in movies. After all this work, I have nearly solved the caper of where in Paradox Space did Vriska Circuit fuck off to? Thank you for asking. Jeez, you don't have to be mean about it. I have not slept or had food or breathed any kind of air in a very long time. It's an honest to clown gigas miracle that my speech hasn't devolved into the guttural cries of a feral bark beast. Frankly, I don't know how I'm still alive. Maybe you're just that awesome. Thank you for the vote of confidence, but I don't think that's how biology works. Then again, nothing about this farcical universe has ever made sense, so who am I to presume? What do you need, John? Oh, right. I don't... uh... know exactly? The inquisitive vocal upturn at the end of that sentence belies that you are not actually as uncertain as you let on. Really? Yes, John. I am in your head, reading your mind like an extremely open book. Why do you know so much about human Nicolas Cage trivia? He's the best actor in history. He is trash from an excrement cube. Hey! This is pointless. I'm not actually in your head this time. I'm just 
guessing based on previous conversations that you're less helpful than you are reticent because you don't know how to talk to people and you're afraid of alienating them. But that's not really a great thing to say about someone right to their face. Jeez, why is everyone jumping down my throat today? If I had to take a shot in the dark, which I will remind you is literally all of the shots I take because I'm blind, your friends are embarking on the perilous journey into your sopping wet ignorance shaft because you're calling them out of the blue only to deliver silent breadcrumb trails that are absolutely pregnant with drama. Yes, just like that. Something tells me my pointed quips aren't playing well with the fragility of your vulnerable mind. Wow, how'd you figure that one out? I am a detective, John. Figuring things out is my job. When was the last time you even had a job? I think you might be overstating the case a little. Have you taken a moment to consider the linguistic implications of the term legislacerator? Okay, that's fair. I will ask again. What do you need, John? Honestly, I think it would be super cool to talk to someone who wasn't heckling me every time I say a sentence. Maybe that isn't a need by your standards. It isn't. <sighs> Terezi, we won, didn't we? Is this an actual question? I guess not. We definitely won. Maybe I just thought that winning would feel better? As someone who is intimately familiar with unmitigated success, I can speak with authority when I say, it never feels as good as you think it will. Really? Imagine you're reading a book. It's big and complicated and difficult to follow at times and takes forever to finish. It goes on so long and you find yourself inventing extra meaning just to help make sense of it. And when it's finally over, you close the book and ask yourself, what now? Now imagine that this book is as big as the universe and also the only book that has ever or will ever exist. Winning is like that. Wow. That's a sad way to look at it, Terezi. I don't know if you noticed, John. Existence is sad, which is why it's pointless to obsess over winning and losing. So we beat Sagrub. Great. Please tell me what has materially changed for us. We grew a little and learned some lessons and got dangerously close to making regrettable scarlet advances on a clown. We are still thoroughly immersed in the nonsense drama of our tiny little lives. Except now, we're in charge of stewarding several species of sentient creatures into a bright and hopeful future, so it's actually worse. Which is why I'm in fucking paradox space trying not to get sucked into a universe-sized vortex instead of cracking open a singular frosted cylinder with my friends back on Earthsea. Wait, do you not want to come back? That isn't what I said. I don't know, Terezi. Your, uh, long, wordy sentence belies that you don't want to come back. Look at you making inferences like some kind of junior detective. Don't change the subject. Fine. Look, I want to come back, but not without her. Right, but what if she's... What if you can't find her? I don't appreciate your Germanic euphemism for Vriska being dead. And besides that, the premise itself is fatally flawed. How? If Vriska were dead, I'd know. Are you sure? John, what do you need? Oh, come on. I'm not having this conversation with you, so either get to the point or leave me alone. You called me! And I can hang up on you too! Okay, fine! I'm sorry for caring, yeesh! I'm just worn out and confused and having a hard time relating to... Relating to what? I don't know. The whole thing. Which thing? Everybody's really happy and having a grand old time getting married and kissing each other, making the world a better place and all. Even you. Your whole maybe a suicide mission is all about love. Or a love, I guess. Mate sprites? Is that the good one? Close enough. I know it hasn't been easy for anyone, and we're all kind of... traumatized. But no one else seems to be doing it alone. It sounds like you need to talk to Jade. What? <laughs> what would I even say to her? She's busy doing troll society stuff. Besides, I don't want to inconvenience her or whatever. John, please explain to me, in laborious and painfully specific detail, how one could ever conceivably inconvenience a witch of space. She's still a person. 
with things and stuff to do, irons in the fire, the whole shebang. And besides all that, she doesn't want to hear from me anyway. Wow, it's been less than a minute and you've already come up with three separate yet equally nonsense reasons for why you shouldn't talk to her. They aren't nonsense! They are demonstrably nonsense. You should talk to Jade. I don't want to. She'll just be mad at me. How often have you ever known her to get angry, besides when she was under the influence of a genocidal fish? <sighs> Not very. You need to talk to Jade. I just... What would I even say to her? Probably very little, if your current mood is any indication. Listen, I have to go, because... Honestly, I just want this conversation to be over. Not to be mean, but you haven't exactly improved my mood. Right, because you're known for your sunny disposition. The notoriety of my pleasant nature is irrelevant to this conversation. Talk to Jade. Terezi, you don't understand. Yes, I do. Talk to Jade. <sighs> don't harumph me like that, human. I may be blind and mortal, but I can still kick your sorry ass any day of the week. You'd have to come back home first. Don't tempt me. <laughs> okay, well... Thanks, I think, for the conversation. Anytime. Just not for this long, and not very often. Wow, that's, uh... Awfully honest. Goodbye, John. Talk to Jade. As you lower the phone from your ear, you consider Terezi's words for all of a few seconds before deciding that, as is very in character for her, she has no idea what she's talking about. Jade doesn't want to hear from you. You might as well just... John! Oh, uh... Hi, Jade. Did you know I was about to call you? Terezi told me. She said you were really sad about something and that you needed to talk to me, but probably wouldn't, so I called you first. Wow, that's a cool thing she did. Yeah, she can be really considerate when she wants to be. Gosh, I feel like we haven't talked in forever. Everybody is so busy these days, I can't imagine all the shenanigans you must have gotten up to. <laughs> yeah. So, what did you want to talk about? The thing is, I didn't... Um, how are you? Oh, I'm okay. Mostly I stick around in my lab doing experiments these days. Wait, I thought you were doing troll stuff. Yeah, I help out with the grub sometimes. It's chaotic and strange, but Kanaya's really patient, which is good because it doesn't exactly come naturally to me. <laughs> it has been nice to babysit and watch grubs grow up, though. I never had a family life, so this is kind of like making up for lost time. They call me Dog Mom. That's adorable. It is! So what about you? What have you gotten up to over the last few years? Well, you know... The usual. Well, that's good to hear, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm So, was there something you wanted to talk about? Or... I mean... Because Therese said it sounded I... kind of urgent. Of course she did. Well... Uh, um... John! Please just say what you wanted to say. You know I'm not gonna judge. Well... <laughs> I, I... Okay! Um... I wanted to say... That... <sighs> I'm sorry. Huh? Sorry for what? It... It doesn't matter. John! What's going on? Why are you sorry? John? Hey! Sorry. For what? For zoning out for a second. No! I mean, why are you sorry right now in the not momentarily inconvenient sense? <sighs> Jade, I... Jeez, why is this so hard? I don't know, because you won't tell me, so just say it, please. I'm really curious. Okay. Okay. I guess, uh... Can I ask you a question? Yes! Do you ever find yourself thinking that you don't remember what it's like to be human? Oh. Sorry. No, don't don't apologize. It just seems like a silly thing to be so dramatic about is all. Really? Well, yeah. 
I mean, basically everyone's asked me at some point or another. Honestly, it's kind of lost its charm a little. Whoa. Okay. So... What's your answer? My answer is that just because I bark and growl occasionally, and sometimes have overpowering cravings for beckon strips, doesn't mean I'm not Beckons still primarily human. N no, that's not what I'm... I, I wasn't asking about being part dog. I was asking about... Well, I'm asking because I... I don't know if I do. Remember, I mean... I just like to be human. Oh. This is about the whole we're gods now thing, isn't it? Yeah. So... Do you? John, it's been nine years since we beat the game. Why is this only coming up now? Just... Humor me, okay? Please? Right. Let me think. Honestly, this is kind of a hard question, because I don't know if I ever really knew what it was like to be human in the first place. Huh? I mean in the sense that I never had friends or family or anyone besides Beck, who was a very good dog, don't get me wrong, and I'm not just saying that because he's literally part of me now, but he was still just a dog. Aloof, mysterious, not great at conversations, you know? Obviously I had you guys and Jake and the trolls, I guess. But none of you were ever... here. It was just me, alone on an island, waiting for a ping from Pester Chum. And now I'm watching trolls grow up, and I see them touching hands and falling on each other and running in circles, all those very normal kid things. And all I can think is, wow, none of that stuff was normal for me. My normal was guns and corpses and abandoned trophies and dream visions of a future that I blindly embraced because it was the only interesting thing I had to hold on to. Those dreams promised me that I had a destiny, but in reality those dreams weren't mine, they were just more rules for me to follow. I thought I knew so many things for sure because absolutely nothing in my life was ever uncertain except for a nebulous far off future that I just kind of figured would work out fine. You know, I used to think Rose was silly for questioning so much about Spurb, but now out of all of us, I think I was the most naive. Because I dared to think I could trust the forces I didn't understand. Gosh. Oh, sorry. I I, I didn't mean to vent like that. No, it's, it's okay. Seemed like you needed to vent. Well, hey. At least now you're away from all that, right? Well, I... I don't... Um... Woof, John, you really dug up some emotions for me. I thought digging was your thing. Ugh, really? <laughs> John. Okay, yes, you're right, technically it's all behind me, but it really doesn't feel like it most of the time. What do you mean? There was a little while in the game after my dream self died where I felt powerless and uncertain, but then I went dog tier and saved our planets and launched our ship where it needed to go. And for that one incredible moment, I was so strong and so free and so cool, and I finally got to do something amazing and help the people I love. I think that was the closest I ever came to feeling human. Because I saw a problem, and for once, I actually really truly had the power to do something about it. So I made those choices, and I saved the essential pieces of our session, and despite everything, we still got away before the scratch. I can't tell you how good it felt to finally ascend like that. I'd become the hero I always dreamed I could be, and there was no hurdle too steep for us to climb anymore. I thought we had it in the bag! And then you died. And I was alone. Oh. At the end of it all, everybody came together from across timelines and universes and sessions after years of planning and preparation for the biggest, most important strife in the history of Paradox Space. And what was my role in that big, giant battle? Herding dogs. Which was fun, and it was something I chose to do despite being a liability, what with the Condes and all. I felt bad that I couldn't do more, but it sure beats sleeping through another important moment. But then, one of the dogs punched me out, and I wound up sleeping through the whole thing anyway. 
And when I woke up, it was already over. I put on a smiling face, and obviously I was overjoyed that everyone was okay and that we won. I mean, we got to create Earth C together. How cool is that? But none of that changes that I... I failed. PM was able to beat Beck Noir, sure. But what if she'd failed? You guys were barely able to beat the Condes and the Jacks as it was. I was terrified when I woke up because I thought you'd all be dead, and I didn't even have a chance to think of avenging you before I realized that trying to do anything would be worse than pointless because the Condes would just take control of me with her mind powers. Even in my wildest dreams, I couldn't make a difference. I failed everyone. You gave me exactly one job to do, and it was still too much for me. Jade, no. You did what you were supposed to. Everything worked out great. <laughs> ah! Look, I know, okay? I know I did what I was supposed to. I know it worked out great. That is the problem. There was literally no other way it could have happened, and it's great that we all lived, and now we have this fantastic new world to make our own, and we're all immortal gods who are worshipped by the society to help make it, and wow, isn't that silly and fun? Remember when we first got here, and up in the sky there was that message that said, Thanks for playing? That thing used to make me so mad, because all it ever did was remind me that I didn't play! Everything was out of my control until I went god tier, and suddenly I had so much control and absolutely nothing to do with it except wait for three years. Meanwhile, Rosic and I got together, Dave and Carcat basically got together, everyone had a great time with the mayor, it just sounds like the most heartwarming journey you could hope for after the anxiety of our session. Nothing like that for me though. Just the consorts and carapatians, who are pleasant and sweet and fun, and I would never say anything bad about them ever. But they're boring! And I couldn't even message anybody, so I was just stuck wandering around our worlds and around our ship, just trying to find something to occupy my mind. Something to distract me from the endless monotony of that voyage. And then what happens after all that waiting? Vriska! Vriska happens! That's all she ever does! She just won't stop keep happening! I'm asleep before I can even say a word, I wander around some dream bubbles, I wake up with one job, I fail at that job, and then it's over. And now every time the sun comes up, I'm reminded that I could have done better. And sure, now I have all the freedom and control I could ever want, and I'm surrounded by friends, and I get to see real actual people all the time, and I am so, 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 so much happier than I was when we were playing that really very bad video game. But still, the only thing I can think of sometimes is that maybe someday you're going to need me again and I'll fail as much as any one person has ever failed because that's what always happens. I'll let you down and somebody will die and I'll just be left behind again to wait and be sad forever. Forever! Because we're gods! Oof. Jade. I'm sorry. But do you know what really hurts? After everything that happened, after I spent years watching you sleep, waiting for the day my dream twin would finally wake up and talk to me. After every conniving ne'er-do-well in paradox space bent over backwards to keep us from just hanging out. We walked into the universe we spilled so much blood to make together. Possessed of all the time we could ever want to say as much as we ever wanted to say. And you stopped talking to me. I didn't- Yes, you did! You stopped talking to me because you had more important things to do just like everybody else. I don't like to think that about you, John, because you're my friend and I love you. But either you're ashamed of me, or you hate me, or you just don't care. And honestly, I can't tell which is worse. I'm not- I don't feel any of those things about you. Then what is it? What did I do wrong? Jade, you didn't do anything wrong. Is that really how I make you feel? Sometimes. I think so much of you, and I have a hard time believing that you treat me the way you have unless I deserved it. Maybe that's the Beck in me making me feel like a kicked dog. It's nothing you did. I just thought you were busy. And... I was afraid to have this conversation. 
Because you deserve better than how I treated you. You're right, but... <sighs> I'm sorry. Please don't apologize to me again. It isn't really your fault. None of it is anyone's fault. Not even mine. I guess the thing that I just did was very human, which is maybe a good sign. But Paradox Space isn't human at all. We can't really comprehend it, even as we've seen more of it than almost anyone who ever lived. Yeah. What I mean to say is... Nothing we did was meaningless. Things that felt predestined were just events that happened in reaction to choices we made. Paradox space is always happening all the time, always. It's like four-dimensional chess. But even knowing that, sometimes it's hard not to feel personally targeted. Well, weren't you? If paradox space is like you say, isn't everything that happened to you just proof of how powerful you always were? Maybe dumbasses like me and Dave were left to run around and go on adventures because we weren't really a threat on our own. But even isolated on an island, just your dog for company. You still managed to do so much. Imagine the threat you'd have posed if they ever let you off the leash. <sighs> Jade, you know what I mean. If Paradox Space is chess, then we were pawns playing against the player, and we won. That was because of you as much as anyone else. None of us got to live the life we deserved, but now we get that chance. And this time... You have friends who will chase you in circles all day if you want. All day! Because we're gods! Oh, John. You're gonna make me cry. I'm sorry. Ugh! Stop apologizing! Wait, we got way off topic. Why were you apologizing in the first place? Oh... No, John. You can't clam up like that after I just spilled my guts on you. At you. I don't remember the expression, actually, but you get the idea. I'm... sorry that I abandoned you. It's my fault that you were stuck on that ship by yourself. I know, John, but it was for bigger reasons. I shouldn't have said anything about all this. It's really not fair to you. Fair to me? You just said every choice we made mattered. I chose to sacrifice three years of your life without ever asking you. Yes, but the alternative was letting Caliborn the Condes win. I may be sad that things happened the way they did, but I'd rather be sad and alive than dead and dead. Your denizen gave you a choice, and you made the right one. Maybe that's true. But maybe it isn't. What do you mean? I had this power already. All my denizen did was put me in a situation where I had to learn how to use it. If I'd have been smarter, or worked harder, maybe I could have... The whole thing was about finding a third way so I could go back and fix what was wrong in our sessions. But really, it was just a parlor trick to get me to panic. Because panic is the only emotion that could get through to me. It was my thick skull that was the problem. But you're the one who had to pay for it. And no matter how much I try, there's no third way with you! Wh what do you mean, try? Shoot. I didn't mean to... <sighs> okay. So... I... Uh, I've tried going back to the ship. With my retcon powers. What? I pretended I escaped low ass before it exploded. And then stayed with you through the trip. Gosh, so then, what went wrong? I think it was the deal I struck with Kythias. If the denizens are all aware of each other in every universe, I guess there's just as much substance to the bargains that they agree to. The cost of being doused in oil wasn't just the destruction of Loaz and the death of your me and your Dave Sprite. I think... Those were just conditions to help the beta and alpha sessions combine better. The real cost was your loneliness. To the point that, without it, everything else falls apart. Oh. The truth is, Jade, I'm ashamed of myself. I knew how lonely you were, and how much it would hurt you to be trapped all alone on that ship for so long, 
and I agreed to it anyway. I knew how unfair your life was, and I willingly made it worse. All for the privilege of being pranked by an unfathomable worm god into figuring out power I already had. And now, no matter what I do, I just can't fix that mistake. Jade? What? You okay? John, I... I don't know what to do with this information. I'm sorry. If you're so ashamed, why did you wait until now to tell me all this? I wanted to. I've thought about it so often. But you seemed to finally be in a good place, and I just... didn't know what I would help. So you just stopped talking to me? I didn't want to make things worse. Worse? Worse? What could possibly be worse than letting me think you didn't care about me anymore? Because it sounds like you were less worried about making things worse than you were about how uncomfortable you'd be having this conversation. I know you meant well, but all you did was take my life into your hands again without my permission. Wow, John, I love you, but sometimes you're dumber than a consort. I, do, do you... Do you want me to go back and stop myself so we never have this conversation? John! I'm sorry! I don't know what to do! This is why I never talk to anybody anymore! Nothing makes sense to me! What would John do in this situation? He'd want to help, right? Please, tell me what he would do. What I would do. I should do. Please. What? John, are you okay? I really don't understand. Here we go, I guess. Can you tell me... my interests? Okay, you like dumb movies? Is that it? You used to try writing computer code, I think, but you were really bad at it and then the world ended. What else? Uh... You don't know, do you? Neither do I. What are you... <sighs> John, I really don't understand. Ever since I got this power, it's like... Okay, you're the most powerful person I've ever met. You can control space in ways that don't make any kind of sense to me. Or most of our friends, probably. I think that shows how smart you are, that you're so close to your aspect, which probably feels like a curse to you, and... And... I don't know. Maybe it is. But when I do the windy thing, I don't control it. It just carries me where I need to be. As that happens, who I am... He doesn't disappear, but... He does come apart. I'm still aware of what's going on around me, but I can only really piece it together after I've reassembled at the end of the line. So it's a matter of trust to become like the wind, because you just don't know what's going to happen next. And I used to be fine with that. But then I got this new power. You're so strong, Jade. But for all that strength, you're still bound to the rules. I'm... not. What does that even mean? I don't know! I don't know! I have no fucking clue! What are the rules, even? Gravity? Time? We've broken those so often I forgot they're even rules for most people. It wasn't so long ago that I was like, Whoa, time travel? That sounds wild and complicated. And Dave would be like, no loser, it's super simple. And he'd explain stable time loops, and I'd go cross-eyed. And then Carcat would say something like, you stupid humans and your disgusting human thought boxes or whatever, blah blah blah, shut up, I'm not insecure. And then, future Dave would go back in time and give him a smooch pap, and Carcat would faint on the spot. And we'd all clap like it was something we'd never seen before, or even thought was possible. <laughs> But now, it's so normal to just, like, turn into goddamn air, or face into nothing, or steal someone's actual soul. No big deal. Whatevs. 
What's on TV tonight? More Frasier reruns? Hell yeah, baby, I hate that show, let's do it! But there are rules bigger than us. There's a logic to, what, the superstructure? Of paradox space that we're not able to violate? Except me, I guess. I retconned a Bork session back into being viable for the endgame by punching Briska in the face. Heck, even wilder than that, because I traveled from a post-scratch universe to the universe that created our universe before our universe was even created using only the weight of Terezi's memories as a guide. Ah! Oh my god, I never actually thought about how stupid that is. Do you see what I mean? No wonder I needed to be drowned in oil before I could wrap my head around this stuff. It should be you with this power! Or Terezi! Or Calliope! I don't know how to handle this. I never have. Do you really think I'd be any less freaked out by that stuff if it were me? Yes! No. I don't know. I just wish it wasn't me. Why did it have to be me? Whose idea was this? I'm just some kid. John, we were all just kids. None of us were ready no, for- No, you're wrong! <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you're not hearing me. Yeah, okay. We weren't prepared for Spur, but our aspects were part of us from birth. Just because we were chasing ourselves in circles trying to figure them out doesn't change that we were still, in some way, destined to use them. This retcon thing? Nothing about it is inherent to me. I just happened to be the dumbass who touched Caliborn's stupid, ugly juju. If it were only the one power, that would be one thing. Great, even. Because I could just not use it and pretend like it never happened to me. But it isn't just that power. Ever since I made the deal with Typhius, I could feel something was off, and it got a little worse every time I jumped or used the windy thing. At first, I thought it was probably just anxiety. End of the world will do that to a kid, right? But even after we won, that feeling stuck around. A feeling like something was missing. Like some piece of myself just wasn't there anymore. Then one night I had a dream. Like a dream bubble? No. This was something else. You are in a dark and quiet place where thunder is in the air. You do not have a name and you do not have interests because you are all names and you have all interests. X is the closest thing to a singular identifier you can have, and even that is just a placeholder. There are some names, however, that ring louder than others, like the echoes of a spider's breath dancing through space. One name is like a whisper, but the other is loud and thrumming with energy. Its presence, both familiar and terrifying, shatters the singularity of X. When you hear the name John, everything snaps into focus. Your name is John Egbert, and you know exactly who you are. How could you not? You look out into the endless abyss and somehow know that you are beyond paradox space, outside of it. But how can you be outside of that which supposedly contains everything? This question should terrify you. But in this dark and quiet place, such things seem perfectly natural. Do you know what you see next, John? Of course you do. I saw this glowing mass of universes being born and dying over and over. A whole galaxy of frogs popping like fireflies faster than I could count. It didn't look nearly as silly as it sounds. Uh-huh. Seeing this, I didn't feel anything. Despite knowing that the universe is limited? Except, universe isn't right. Ugh. Ugh. Where's Rose when you need her? I'm not cut out for this kind of stuff. What about multiverse? I guess, but it's even bigger than that, because every universe frog is full of multiverses, right? So this was like an omniverse? I don't know, sure. Whatever it is, it only has so much movement, and when that movement stops, there won't be anything left. It's like that idiot snake eating itself. I hate that snake! Don't let Calliope hear you say that. It's like... 
There's a box that contains everything. It's 100% thingness. And every new universe in that box eats up some of that thingitude. So the box should run out of thing eventually, right? But it doesn't! Because each new universe somehow uses a smaller chunk of that 100%. Which means the whole thing is effectively infinite, despite the fact that the box is closed and there's no way for it to top off its thing meter. So the box might as well contain itself. Which means the Omniverse is always in the process of dying while also being literally immortal. This is a very interesting dream, John, but what does it have to do with anything? I don't know. It's all so confusing and everywhere in my head. I feel like I need a corkboard and a bunch of colored string just to keep track of it. I think I finally know how you felt back when we first started playing Spurb. <laughs> what I come back to is... We have Earth C now. We beat the game. We won. This is our world, and we get to make it what we want. Right? That's what everyone keeps saying. But this universe didn't just magically escape that box. Which means that someday, our new universe is going to face the same apocalypse the old one did. Because it's the apocalypse every universe faces. So does that mean there's already secret ruins with old letters and abandoned stations from a new session of Spurb that won't start for centuries? All of it just... waiting for whoever follows us? That is a concerning thought. But... maybe that's just how things are. This box, this system, whatever it is, I... I don't think there's anything we can do about it. I mean, what can you do? do about something like that. It is what it is. And that's fine, I guess. That isn't what scares me. What is it? John? That wrongness I felt after Typhius wasn't trauma or anxiety. I mean, not just trauma or anxiety. It was like the feeling you get after cutting your hair, where suddenly your head is lighter than it should be. Only instead of losing something physical, I lost something... I don't know. Psychological? Emotional? Spiritual? The details don't really matter. The point is, I was missing something. Do you mean like memories? People forget stuff sometimes, John. That's pretty normal. Memory is part of it, but it's more than that. Imagine that. Somewhere out in the Omniverse, there is a you that contains every version of you there ever was. You are it, but it isn't you. Dave Pettis said something like this to me before, but I thought they were just flirting. Right! Wait, what? Never mind. Point is, if the you that's talking to me right now dies, the you that exists out there only grows. Does that make sense? I think so, yes. You're attached to it, and... I don't think anyone can kill it. At least you're not supposed to. But as we already established, supposed to doesn't really seem to apply to me anymore. Okay, but what does that mean? Are you trying to kill yourself? I'm trying to do the opposite! That's why I never talk to anyone! That's why I stay in my house! No one was ever meant to have this kind of power. We aren't supposed to see the things I've seen. But I think it's worse for me than it would be for anyone else. Because I spread out. I take myself apart. That me that exists out there. I think it's the reason I'm able to put myself back together when I do the windy thing. But there's something about this power that disrupts that me. It's not just memories that have gone missing. It's not that I've forgotten things that happened to me. I think it's that those things, those events, they never happened at all anymore. That's terrifying, John. It freaks me out a lot too, actually. I'm kind of really fucking scared, almost all the time! <sighs> when I reflect on my life, I feel like nothing makes sense, and I realize there have to be things that happen to me that just don't exist anymore. Things that were essential in getting me where I am today. I see you guys being so enthusiastic and invested, but I just feel apathy. Was I always like that? That can't be true, can it? People are supposed to be more than just interests, but I barely even have those anymore. 
what little I know about myself just feels so thin. And I think it's all just a matter of time before there's no John at all. I'll break apart and vanish into space. And it won't be me that's gone. It'll be the very idea of me. I won't be dead or double dead. I just will have never existed in the first place. No one will miss me. No one will remember me. I have nightmares about this, Jade. I can feel myself letting go and becoming a billion, billion atoms just decaying through paradox phase. I feel those atoms phasing in and out of existence, so untethered from everything that they just up out of the Omniverse forever. And there's no putting me back together, because there is no me anymore. Except, I feel something, and it's the worst thing I've ever felt in my whole life. It's worse than loneliness. It's worse than being dead. It's the awareness that an I used to exist. It doesn't anymore. Now it never did. Jade. I have to hold on to those pieces of myself as much as I can. I have to try to be whoever I think John is because I have no idea what few pieces of myself I still have will disappear. But I know eventually it won't matter. It's inevitable. And I am terrified. I am so scared. I am so... Jade? Are you there? Please talk to me. Please don't go. I know it's what I deserve. You should hate me so much for what I did to you. It's selfish that I don't want to be alone. Maybe it's better if I go. I think... I think if I tried hard enough, I could just... Me. But I... Don't want to go yet. Don't want to go. Jade, please! You lower your phone and see that its screen is dark. You feel a desperate illness as you realize that all your worst fears were true. No one cares about you. Obviously, your problems are just the complaints of a spoiled nuisance. Your friends have better things to do than humor your whining. They're too busy to notice you falling apart. Or maybe they don't notice what's missing because they never knew it was there at all. Honestly, what's there to mourn? You barely even existed in the first place. You are going to disappear eventually. It will be a miserably slow process as you dissolve into something less than a ghost. Do you really want to see their faces as they look at a person they believe they've never met? You'll believe the same, John. The whole thing is such a misery. Why not speed things along? Get it over with. Yes. You look down and see your legs distorted through a prismatic dance of light. A light that slowly spreads up your body. You should be frightened. But in this dark and quiet place, such things seem perfectly natural. John! You blink. Suddenly she's standing in front of you. Hand on each other's shoulders. She's breathing fast, and there are tears perched at the corners of her eyes. You look her up and down, a little bit in disbelief. Why is she here? Why is she I don't care what you think about your dumb powers, John Egbert. You could shatter into a million pieces and be erased from existence, and I'd still know you were gone. I don't care if you end up in an old session, or the furthest ring, or scattered across all corners of Paradox space. I don't even care if you manage to leave the Omniverse. I will track you down, I will gather you up, and I will put the John back in the box. 
You see the scene as if you are outside of yourself. You see a silly girl with dog ears trying to shake some sense into a tired boy who has felt so lost for so long. You hear a familiar voice say a name that sounds like your own. You feel a tugging at your heart. That's when you start laughing. It comes shallow at first, like an <laughs> echo from inside of a cave, but it travels through you until you're practically howling. Jade lets go of you and takes a step back, cocking her head to one side, tears still glittering on her face. She touches your arm and your laughter begins to fade. You feel a weight pressing down on you, pushing you into a slouch as your lungs play catch up. You fall into silence and... John? Are you okay? You look up at her and you notice that you started to cry. I... I... Without another pause, you pull Jade close to you and bury her face in her shirt. You are sobbing now, something you haven't done in years. With that, the light that was slowly devouring you recedes. Jade wraps her arms around your shuddering body and pulls you as close as she can. Jade, I don't want to be alone anymore. I'm so sick of waiting to disappear. I miss you so much. I miss Dave. I miss Rome. I miss all of us. I miss you too. John, I don't know if there are pieces of you that have been erased, but I do know that isolating yourself like this can only make things worse. Sometimes we're just terrified and don't know what to do because we may be gods, but we're still just kids. There's no one to tell us what to do or how to deal with any of this. That's why we need each other. That's why I need you. You're my brother and I don't know what I'd do without you. You can be dumber than a sack of rocks sometimes, and your best intentions can definitely leave something to be desired. But that's true of all of us. And I promise you that under no circumstances do you deserve to disappear. Who we are is who we surround ourselves with, John, and we have the best friends in the history of Paradox Space. So what if you can't remember your interests? There are so many interesting things in the world, it defies our ability to comprehend. You are alive, and you're loved, and I would be so fucking angry at you if you just up and vanished! She pulls away and looks you in the eye. You have a hard time making out her expression because your glasses are smudged and covered in tears. Hey, uh, Rose? Oh, uh, hi Kanaya. You're shaking. Hey, um, I think something's going on with John. It feels like huh? a thousand years of sadness have just burst out of you with such force it physically hurts. So much, perhaps, that you'll still be feeling it for a long time to come. But that you feel it all is proof that you are, in some way, still human. Maybe that's not enough in the long run, but it's certainly a start. An open door to a longer journey. <laughs> Well, I'll leave you to it. Good luck. It sounds like Rose got overzealous in handling a situation and wound up setting some can houses on fire. Kanaya insists she doesn't need help, but I think she just wants to keep Rose all to herself. Why don't we go help them clean up? You look around your room and it feels like you've just woken up from a dream. Where have you been all this time? How did you like things get so bad? You look at your sister and... She is smiling. It's been so long, you forgot what that smile looked like, and how infectious it was. Now you're smiling too. It feels odd on your face, like you're a little out of practice. Come on, let's get you up. You lock yourself towards Jade with open arms. As she embraces you again, you're overcome with the realization that Absolutely everything in your life always has been and always will be a terrifying and uncertain prospect. Except this. This may be the one thing across every reality that is always reliable. Thank you, Jade. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, my name's Dare. I'm the primary director and editor of this ambitious project of fans of Godfields aiming to dub as much of it as we can. Hopefully all of it. This is our first episode, and we're so proud to be working on this project, especially to be able to release it to the world on the 13th, 413. There will be a video version coming soon that we weren't able to get ready in time, unfortunately, and after that, the videos will be released in tandem with the podcast feed updates to the best of our abilities. God Feels is written by Sarah Zedek. You can follow on Twitter at HMSNoFun and read the fanfiction of including Godfields, at archiveofourown.org slash users slash Sarah Zedig. That's S-A-R-A-H-Z-E-D-I-G. Music used in this episode is Showtime Piano Refrain by Kevin Regamey from the album Homestuck Volume 1, Check the Metadata by James Roach to Resi's theme from PesterQuest, Alternia by Seth Peel from the album Alternia Bound, Frost by Clark Powell from the album Medium, Frogs also by Clark Powell and from the album Medium, Underfoot by Eric Scheel from One Year Older, Shade also also by Clark Powell and from the album Medium, Storm Spirit by Yorin de Brun from the album Strife, A Tender Moment by Toby Fox from Homestuck Volume 6, and finally Get Up by Toby Fox from Homestuck Volume 5, which you are hearing now. And now, for our lovely cast... Selena Phobia as John Egbert. And you can find me on Twitter at Selena Phobia with two A's. Hey everybody, I'm Jess, and I did the narration. You can find me on Twitter at Fender Jess Bass, that's B-A-S-S. I'm Rowan Astor, and I voiced Rose Lalonde. Feel free to follow me on social media at Jinkies underscore Junebug everywhere. Hiya, my name's Leo, and I played Kanaya. I'm Jay, or Six Hokage One, and I play Dave. You can find me online at various places linked from my website at sixy.name. That is S I X Y dot N A M E. Hey, I'm Hunter M. I voice Carcat in this dub. However many lines that might have been. Just the one! You can find me at Hunter M Comics on Twitter. Our Terezi was not available to record a credits reel for this but they were played by Universal Quietus at CosmicQuietus on Twitter.com. And finally, me! I played Jade. You can find me personally at Dare0451 on pretty much all social media, everything from YouTube to Twitter to Tumblr to Discord, and if you'd like to get involved with this project, you can send me a DM on Twitter or Discord, and I can get you an invite to our production server. Thank you for listening, have a wonderful day, and look forward to more.